Hello everyone, welcome to another installment of WGF TV. We're right here on YouTube.com slash Russell Gamer and FX TV. I'm the Russell Gamer, Double D Bunny Gujo, being joined by a couple of guys. First off, you'll recognize him as the host of Hardcore Wrestling Radio, which will be heard exclusively over on YouTube.com slash HWR Show. Ladies and gentlemen, the Illuminous One, the Shining Star, Rick Star. Rick, how are you shining? I'm doing good, really. Thanks for having me. Ladies and gentlemen, our resident music... Not used music to being on camera, guys, so uh, this is the first for me. <laughs> and our resident music mogul over on YouTube.com slash Lance Moss TV, he is the incomparable Lance Moss. Lance, how you doing? I'm doing good. Thanks for having me. We're looking at Friday Night Smackdown for the week of December 27, 2013, the very last Smackdown of 2013. Uh, and John Cena came out said he wanted to... Uh, challenge Randy Orton for the WWE World Weight Championship and instead gets the Shield. The Shield started a three on one beatdown on Cena. Then Mark Henry and Biggie Langston came out to make the save and Rick, it near, from what I thought it was going to go, it was, I thought it was going to go the typical route. I thought King was going to come out there and make a six man tag, but instead he kind of changed it around and made three separate matches. It was, Mark Henry and Roman Reigns, uh, Dean Ambrose and Biggie Langston, and John Cena and Seth Rollins. Do you think it was kind of a good idea for WWE to kind of switch it up and doing like traditional six-man tag setups like that? Believe it or not, um, yeah, I think it was a kind of a good idea. Um, I actually was hoping to see um, the uh, Roman Reigns and Biggie Langston, but obviously uh, they're going to keep those two apart, and they're going to wait for uh, a big pay-per-view for those two to happen. Um, I'm not sure if that's going to be coming. What's uh, you know the next pay-per-view? Maybe the Royal Rumble, or maybe even for uh, even stretching us to WrestleMania. We'll have to wait and see what happens. I, I gotta give it to them, you know, for their, their, their switch up on here. I gotta say four out of five on that one. And we open up with the Wyatt family and the Usos, which was just basically a big squash match. Uh, Wyatt family, uh, just destroying the Usos, making them really look like chumps, to be honest with you. And so, I don't see any reason why we should talk about that matchup any more than just say three out of five. And that's being kind, because the only person yeah. that's really shining right now is, uh, Luke Harper of the Wyatt family. And we, we've all been in agreement on that before, that right now he's becoming the, uh, the bigger star of the gimmick yeah. rather than Bray Wyatt. But uh, up next, what I find interesting um, is uh, Antonio Cesaro with Weed McMuffin and Zeb Coulter uh, coming out to take on Cody Rhodes with Gold Dust. And this was really a very, very well-worked match, in my opinion, Lance. But uh, the way I figured, you know, with Cesaro getting the win... Over Rhodes, you know, thank courtesy of uh, Weed McMuffin's, uh, Jack Swagger's, uh, destruction, uh, or distraction rather, I should say. Um, I wish he would have a destruction, but anyway. Uh, do you kind of figure that now WWE be pushing instead of the Wyatt family, which was originally reported, um, to be pushed for the tag team title, do you think that WWE now is doing the real Americans instead of the Wyatt family? It appears to be that way. I mean, any time a, a member of one tag team, it does uh, beats the tag team, a member of the tag team champions, it does appear that way, so probably. But they're creative, yes. I'm going to go four out of five on this match. Uh, we have prime time players and Ryback, so you know, pretty much cut and dry tag match. Uh, Darren Young uh, rolling up uh, Curtis Axel to get the victory. Man, how the mighty have fallen when it comes to Ryback and Curtis Axel. I mean, they have really gone far down, but uh, I'm going to say three out of five, but another matchup that's really worth talking about is a matchup that was set up backstage. Randy Orton was doing an interview with Renee Young when they get interrupted by Dolph Ziggler and next, you know, Kane makes the match between these two. And one thing we did make mention of, Rick, is uh, when we were talking about it, it didn't look like, uh, you know, that Ziggler was going to job. But when, one thing that Ziggler can do is he can make matches really, really entertaining. And to me, that's what we got with him and Randy Orton was a really good, entertaining match. You know, I have to agree. Um, we knew right off the bat that he was not going to win that match um, for one reason or another. But before that, I got to ask one question. What was with the pink hair? <laughs> I, you know, I, I, 
<laughs> are they trying? I get the long hair thing, but you know, pink, why? I have no yeah, idea. I, I understand that he had the hot pink thing because in California, a lot of people thought that, you know, the hot pinky might have been like a little, eh, you know, better for the other side. But in California, you know, it's a beach thing. So I got that, but within the hair, you're starting to wonder. Um, but other than that, the match was phenomenal. He really did uh, give um, Randy Orton a run for his money uh, until the end. And then, of course, uh, Randy Orton uh, hit, hit him with the RKO, one, two, three. And then after that, just gave him a serious beating after the match. So really put him in his place. Including that uh, Randy Orton. Uh, I have to really give it to overall four out of five. Yeah, and, yeah uh, absolutely. And let's throw that out, that question out to the viewers and subscribers. You know, what are you guys' uh, thoughts about Dolph Ziggler's little pink hair thing that he had going on SmackDown? Put, put your answers in the comment section below for that one. As Daniel Bryan just thoroughly annihilated Danny and Sandal. And after, uh, and after this match, of course, we get another appearance by Bray Wyatt saying something to the extent that in this inferno, Bray Wyatt is God. I don't under, I don't understand it either. To be honest, yeah, well, it's it good they don't believe in him. <laughs> it, it still looks like they're trying to <laughs> recruit uh, Daniel Bryan into the Wyatt family. That's what it's it seems to be, you know, because you know there, there were rumors, you know, going around that you know he's already got the beard, you know, he, you know, so he's already got the look for it, but. You know, how would, you know, if they were really going to bring him in, you know, under what circumstances would they be doing it as? You know, they can't do it like they did with, with John Cena and the Nexus from so long ago where, uh, Cena lost the match and was forced to join the Nexus against his will. So I'm, I'm, I'm I can safely say that they ain't going to do that because that's just going to be too big of a repeat. So, you know, if they're really going to put Brian in with the Wyatt family, I would really like to know what the circumstances would be for that. But, uh, other than that, um, Three out of five for that one. Now, here comes the, the series of matches involving the Shield. First off, Biggie Langston, the Intercontinental Champion, taking on the United States Champion, Dean Ambrose. And man, oh man, Langston, to me, Lance has just been on one hell of a push, hasn't he? Yeah, I mean, they, I mean, you, you, when you're somebody and you beat over the Shield, which is, let's face it, we can all agree, they're the top faction in this company right now. Starting to show a little cr- few cracks, but they're still the top uh, top of the heap in uh, factions right now. So he's definitely getting a push. Of course, yeah, he has a title, so yeah, he's getting a push. Langston gets the win with the big ending on Ambrose. And next up, we, Rick, we had Roman Reigns and Mark Henry. And I said from the onset of the Shield gimmick that I was not really in for Roman Reigns. I, I really didn't see a future. And as of late, Roman Reigns is just provenly wrong, and he's just been so thoroughly impressive with everything he's been doing as of late that, you know, we say that Luke Harper is the standout of the Wyatt family, and right now, what it looks to be, in my opinion, Rick, that Roman Reigns might be the standout for the Shield. He's one of them. It's, it's really hard because I, 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 all three of these guys definitely in their own can, when this team does break out, I definitely think they can all go out and possibly be a main eventer. Um, as I'm sure you'll talk about the, uh, the next match after this, um, Rollins definitely has his own, um, capabilities of being a main eventer. But anyways, you know, um, Roman Reigns definitely was a, a major breakout star for this year. He definitely proved it in the past couple of months. We all said at the beginning, we weren't sure if, uh, Reigns didn't really have it. And he's starting to prove us all wrong. Um, it was a good match for what it was. Um, he's done and that Superman punch again. Uh, he didn't really do it. I don't think he did in this particular match, but he did in the past couple weeks. Really upped his game a lot. So um, I definitely got to give it a, you know, a 3.5 out of 5. Great match. And talking about a matchup to cap off the final SmackDown of 2013, John Cena and Seth Rollins. Wow, oh, wow. They really wowed me. You know, I was thoroughly entertained, and that's sticking it to you Cena haters out there. Um, John Cena was uh, worked a really well uh, work match. Seth Rollins did. Uh, if you guys uh, noticed on the outside, towards the end of the match, uh, 
the Dean Ambrose was uh was thrown to the announce table and he was sitting on the chair. Then Mark Henry got to Roman Reigns and uh threw him and his and I noticed his foot went like smack right in the face of Dean Ambrose. I don't know if there was um, any kind of now, I know that wasn't a planned spot. There's no way in hell a foot to the face like that is a planned spot. So I I don't know if there have been any reports of uh, an injury or any kind of issues with Ambrose. I haven't seen anything like that. Um, Rick, you haven't heard anything about that, have you? There's been nothing in the news. I've been kind of looking around. So uh, if it was, the WWE's keeping a lid on it at the moment anyways. Man, like I said, you know, we were talking about Roman Reigns and how good he is, Seth Rollins and John Cena. I want to talk about a great way, a great main event. Uh, Rollins went for a springboard crossbody. Cena rolls, catches in, rolls through it, and turns it into the attitude adjustment and gets the win. So uh, the trio of Cena, Henry, and Langston kind of win the series two to one. But I got to say, what a great entertaining way to cap off the final SmackDown of 2013 with Cena and well, all three matches to say the to say the least. You know, they all deserve their props. Uh, time to find out overall scores and our picks for best and worst match or segment of Friday Night SmackDown. And in my opinion, the best match of the night is going to go to John Cena and Seth Rollins with Roman Reigns and Mark Henry a very, very close second. Think about that, guys. When's the last time we said anything involving Mark Henry in a match was best match of the night? Very, it's very, but he came very, very close. Very, very close. Uh, worst segment... Worst match of the night, uh, I, I don't know, if it, uh, for some reason, I gotta go Wyatt Family and Usos because basically it was just a flat out squash match. They could have made it a good, entertaining tag team match. If WWE was so solid on revitalizing the tag team division like they said they've been, they would have had this as possibly a, a more, I think a more entertaining match. A more competitive match would have possibly put the uh, the Wyatt family over even more. But apparently they just wanted to go out there and flat out dominate the Usos, make them look like chumps. So in my personal opinion, the the latter, they shouldn't have done that. They shouldn't have made it a squash match. An entertaining match probably would have been more suited for the gimmick, but WWE didn't do that. So that's why I'm going to pick that for Worst match of the night. And overall score for Friday Night SmackDown. How about this for our SmackDown, guys? Four out of five. It was a good show. Well, now let's, let's go over to you, Rick, and find out what your score is and your picks for best and worst match or segment of Friday Night SmackDown. Well, Billy, I have to agree with you. The best match of the night, definitely for uh, for me anyway, was um, the Cena-Rollins match. Um, I was truly impressed with Rollins. Um... I definitely would give um, uh, Reigns and uh, Henry a close second. You know, um, the triple threat, you know, the, the, the triple, the trifecta main event, excuse me, was definitely, um, you know, the highlights of the night. Um, as far as the opening main event, I mean, the opening match, uh, it was okay. I mean, I can understand why it was a squash match, probably because more due to time constraints, because obviously they had the three main events. So they kind of had to just say, well, somebody had to kind of take the bump. So it was what it was. I think if they really wanted to do time constraints, I think they just should have just not had the match at all. But, you know, somebody unfortunately kind of had to take the heat in the bunt of it, and it was the Usos. So for that, I have to go with you on that one, too. All right. And, so uh, overall, yeah, I'll give it a four out of five. And uh, finally, we go to you, Lance, to find out your overall score and your picks for best and worst match or segment of Friday Night SmackDown. Even though I came in like 20 minutes late, but yeah, I gotta say, this, probably the squash was the worst. And uh, best, I gotta differ with y'all. To me, it was Ziggler and Orton for best match. Could yeah, I just like how those two guys work together. Yeah, it definitely falls into the same category, you know. The, you know, little, like I said, you know, the trifecta main event was really good, and and if it wasn't for that one, definitely Randy Orton and Dolph Ziggler would have made it as for me as best match of the night. But to me, uh, Cena and Seth Rollins really stole the show in the in the final. So 
that's why um, I went that route. And it's a good thing they did because, you know, if you would have had, like, Orton and Ziggler kind of outshine everybody, you know, it kind of makes it hard for the rest of the show. You know, because you kind of have to move up to that level. And to me, honestly, they did. They did. And I'm glad they did as well. Yeah. So what do we want to know now from you guys out there, the viewers and subscribers, your thoughts on Friday Night Smackdown this week? What are your picks for best and worst match or segment of Friday Night Smackdown? We want to hear from you guys out there. Be sure you put your comments in the comment section below. Don't forget to like and favorite this video. And guys, like I said on the Impact Review, it's been a long time since I've gotten to say this. But here it goes. Rick, what can fans expect to see when they come visit the, you guys over on HWR? Well, right now, uh, we're pretty much, you can always find us over at, uh, Hardcore Wrestling Facebook.com slash Hardcore Wrestling Radio. Um, you can always find, uh, find the latest news, uh, all, you know, great picks, uh, from, uh, Will and, uh, James. And, uh, Anytime you want to head on over to our YouTube page for that's on youtube.com slash HWR show for all our latest talk shows. And Lance, what can fans expect to see when they come visit your channel over on youtube.com slash Lance Moss TV? Album reviews, NASCAR reviews when it's in season, a uh, little bit of wrestling stuff here and there, uh, redneck gourmet cooking videos, and whatever else pops into my head. Fans, don't forget to submit your questions for the Q&A series, Ask the Wrestle Gamer, to facebook.com slash WGSTV. Remember, I will try to answer any and all questions sent in to the Facebook page, but the only way to do it is to go to facebook.com slash WGSTV. Also, don't forget to please subscribe to youtube.com slash WrestleGamer and youtube.com slash the TV Network. So for the Illuminous One, the Shining Star, Rick Star, and the Comparable Lance Moss from Lance Moss TV, I'm the Russell Gamer. Don't be Bunny Boo Journal saying thank you very much for watching.